Testament in the book of Deuteronomy tonight. If you would, open your copy of God's Word to Deuteronomy chapter number 34. I'm going to read verse 5 through 10. I'm going to do a, a closing message on the uh, servant, the man of God. We've been preaching on Moses. I've been preaching on him so long, I thought maybe you're getting bored hearing about Moses. Man, I respect Moses. I love Moses. Moses is the servant of God. Uh, one of the greatest things ever be said about anybody, God said about him. And today, in uh, Deuteronomy 34, I pick up reading at verse number 5, reading through verse number 10. So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulture unto this day. And Moses was a hundred and twenty years when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural face or force abated. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days, so the days of weeping and mourning for Moses was ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him, and the children of Israel hearkened unto him, and he and did as the Lord commanded Moses. Verse 10, And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Would you bow for a moment of prayer? Our Father in heaven, we're blessed to be here tonight. And we thank you for the opportunity. We really do. Dear God, I know for some preachers, going to church is like I've got to go and I've got to preach another sermon. But dear God, for me, it's an opportunity to worship you. It's an opportunity, dear God, to be able to reach up for you and for you to reach down to me. And dear Lord, that we might hear from heaven and you might bless your children in this church and these individuals that we might sense and know we've been in your presence tonight. Oh God, we need your anointing. We need your blessing. We need your help. And dear God, one more time, I will confess my inadequacy and insufficiency for this sermon and for this service. And God, I certainly would like to just turn myself over to you the best that I know how and say, Lord, here I am tonight. I'm a vessel. Be willing to be placed in your hand. Use me tonight, and God, do touch. But Lord, we come to hear from you. May you speak tonight. We'll love you for all that you do. Anoint us again with that anointing that makes preaching come easy. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated tonight. I want to share a message this afternoon entitled, The Obituary of a Hero. The Obituary of a Hero. All of us are well aware, if Jesus tires his coming, all of us is going to come to the end of our life here. The end of your life. Your name will appear somewhere in an obituary column. Or at a funeral, someone will get up and read your obituary. Uh, have you considered what might be said about you when you are gone? Have you considered tonight the very idea that one of these days you're going to be leaving this world? Someday, if Jesus tires his coming, you will have someone read in your obituary, and they will do a eulogy about you. And about your life what would you like for someone to say whatever you like for someone to say that's what you need to be living somebody give me a witness right there that's what you need to be living every day of your life I believe that Moses had given a lot of thought that one day he was going to come till the end of his journey or his life here you say, what makes you believe something like that? It's because of what I heard him say in Deuteronomy chapter number 32, verse 29. Moses told them all. He said, oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their later end. Moses said that you need to think about beyond these days and these years these temporary time that we're here, have you considered your later end? I pray that each of us will tonight carefully consider our life and how it may end. I believe Moses finished his life always being busy for God. He worked full time for the Lord and Savior right up 
to the end. Now, I believe that every one of us that are here need to understand that we need to love Jesus and we need to love him all of our life until the end comes. Uh, one of the problems we have today is a lot of people got the ideal, well, you know, I'm going to live long enough to I'm going to find retirement someday. And when I get to where I get retirement age, I'm looking forward to it because I'm going to retire. And when I retire, I'm retiring from the secular job. I'm retiring from the business and busy life. But you know, the problem is some people retire from God. And they think when they retire, they don't go to church. They don't work in the church. They don't serve God anymore. I want to tell you, brother, and if God were to permit you to someday live to the time when you were to reach a retirement, you don't retire on being a Christian. Amen. You don't retire on serving God. Amen. It's in my desire. Uh, someday, Brother Billy, you'll probably have to retire. I tell you, I don't know where you got that at. I don't have to retire. I might have to die and I might have to pay taxes, but I don't have to retire. Amen. In fact, I don't expect to give up preaching until God says that you're gone, boy, and you can't do it no more. But until then, I'm going to serve God. I may not serve God all my born days at Mount Nash. I might not be able to keep up the, uh, the push and shove that this church demands and what I see it needs to be done. I might have to find a lighter load somewhere. But bless God, I'll be somewhere preaching for God and telling a story and doing what I can help sinners get saved and save people be discipled as long as I've got breath. Moses lived for God and he loved him to the day he died. It wasn't no thought of retiring, going to Florida and taking it easy and just getting away from it all. I believe, bless God, that you ought to serve God until you leave this old world. And then when you see him, you might be able to hear him say, well done. A good and faithful servant. Don't you want to hear that, church? Amen. I believe this is what we need to understand today. Moses served God. He never ceased serving God. I tell you, he died in the saddle. Amen. And he said, I'm going to, I, I might rot, but I'm not going to rust away. Amen. And he stayed on the course for the Lord. Moses stayed with it until the day he died. I read this week of a, a, a Dawson Trotman, who was the founder of the Navigators and a ministry Billy Graham used a lot in his own ministry. He died in 1956, and he died while he was trying to save two girls from drowning. He had, he had jumped in. He had pushed them up into a rescue boat. And when he was pushing the second one up to save her, he took his life's breath, and he drowned Time Magazine ran his picture and his obituary, and underneath a picture of, of, of Dawson Trotman, they put, uh, he was uh, lived his life trying to lift others up. And I thought, that's the way I want to live my life, and someday, if ever I leave, I want somebody to say that he lived his life trying to hold somebody up. Amen. I want you to hear me tonight as we talk to you about the obituary of a hero. Notice, first of all, as God is going to do the obituary uh, for Moses, he says, the servant Moses. In fact, in verse number 5, if we got her on the screen, notice what the verse says. Here's the word of God. The Bible tells us in this particular verse, so Moses, the servant of the Lord. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know anything greater since that's what God considered to be a great statement. And God thought this to be so highly. So when you came here to the uh, obituary, you might think, well, the obituary of Moses is going to be a long obituary. I mean, tell you, you could eulogize Moses a long time because that was some kind of man of God. But yet one of the greatest things that God could ever say about Moses, and he really didn't talk about his accomplishments. He didn't talk about him writing the five first books of the Bible. He didn't talk about his miracles in Egypt. He didn't talk about it. You know, I would have had to mention the rolling back of that Red Sea where over two million people walked through. Amen. Uh, but God uh, didn't mention uh, any of that. You know what God said about his uh, great man? He said, Moses, the servant 
of the Lord. One of the greatest statements that ever could be made about anybody here tonight or anywhere else is you are a servant of the Lord. Amen. That's it right there. In fact, I believe that God is honored by someone and will bless those who are willing to serve him. That's right. Uh, God sums up so much in just that one word, uh, my servant. In Matthew 20 and 27, Jesus said, Whosoever will be chief among you, let him be the servant of of all the biggest people the greatest people in Mount Nice Baptist Church or any other church or any other way in God's eyes and mine as well is people that's available to serve people that's willing to serve people that don't have to have a limelight on them people that don't have to have their name announced in big paper broad words people that don't have to be bagged and all the time pampered people just willing to serve God and they don't care who gets the credit as long as God gets the glory. Amen. And so God's Jesus even said, those that will be chief is those that's going to be the servant. Those who wants to be promoted by God Almighty will find themselves willing to serve. Amen. Uh, here, I believe, is a man's greatness. May I say to you this afternoon that a man's greatness is not measured by how many men or people serve them. A man's greatness is measured by how many people you serve. Amen. Are you willing to serve? God said, this is my servant, Moses. Two things I say about this servant, Moses. One, he served fully. When Moses got the call of God upon his life, he didn't play with the call of God. He wasn't up and down or in and out. Somebody hear me right now. My God Almighty, I tell you, if there's ever a day that church people got serious about God and more people got serious about God, it's right now. I don't know, brother. You know, people would rather call church off than go to church. People would rather get out of doing something for God than try to do something for God. It's almost a day like we're trying, why don't we just shut God off and just go do what we want to do? Well, brother, I'm doing what I want to do. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, you know what? I tell you, brother, I think you ought to be full-time for God if you're saved by the grace of God. Moses said, I'm not up and down. I'm not in and out. I'm all the time God. Now, here's a full-time for God. He wasn't no part-timer. He was an all-timer. He was 100% out. Uh, Moses did not have a rival in his life. Again, the love of God. He had one thing upon his mind, serving God. You know, today the world is still your affection. The world is still your love. The world is still your focus today. A lot of people can't serve God because the world's got their time, got their talent, got their toll. I'm telling you, got their treasures. I'm telling you, friend, God, I'd have every one of them for you. Moses said there's no rival in my line. There's no competition between God and, and, and me. I, I, I'm not going to be caught up in this rat race and forget church and forget God and get so devoted to what I'm doing and I don't have time for God. Moses was not a half-hearted Christian. Moses was a wholehearted, amen. The half-hearted will become faint hearted too many Christians today are only part-timers. Amen. I know you look at me right now and you say, you know, Brother Billy, if I was a full-time Christian, like you are, I'd serve God too. Wait just one minute. Bless God, if you're saved, you're saved full-time. You're a full-time Christian. Amen. You know the problem we got today, you're not a Sunday morning Christian. You're a Monday morning and Tuesday morning, Wednesday and Thursday. You're an everyday Christian if you're a Christian. You're full-time for God. It's not part-time and I serve God. I serve God on the job. I serve God in the mud. I serve God in the mechanics outfit. Every one of them, if you're saved, you're full-time for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Oh, Brother Bill, if I was like you full time, bless God, you are full time for God. If you're saved, you are. We got a problem now, Sunday morning glories. <laughs> Come in, bloom out, and fade away, and never see them again. My God Almighty, Moses was full time. He was there already all the time. Uh, you, you hear me now? 
It's hard for some of you to give God a few hours out of your entire week. Jesus left heaven, gave up his reign. My, my, my. Come down to this earth, born of a virgin Mary in a stable stall, tuck upon him flesh, lived 33 and a half years in this old miserable world, suffered and died on an old rugged cross because he wanted to pay man's sin debt and make man a way back to God. If a God if like that, if a Savior like that would leave heaven's glory and come down here, take up on him flesh, live, suffer, and die for me, he's worth of my time to give to him. Somebody hear what I'm saying right now. I'm telling you, God deserves it. It ought not be a complaint that you give him a few hours of your week. You ought to be willing to give him everything. Moses said, I'm all yours, God. We need some people that's devoted and dedicated to God. Here's somebody who served fully. Amen. I, I like that. Oh, D.L. Moody, some, you, you show me somebody that's making their mark in this world for God. I'll show you somebody serious. You've heard a story of D.L. Moody when he heard Henry Barley preaching. And, he, and Henry Barley said that this world's never seen what God could do with a man totally surrendered to him. Mr. Moody was sitting in there as a young man. He said, I'll be that man. And D.L. Moody so completely, fully surrendered himself to God. On one occasion, Mr. Moody, uh, you know, I, 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 I've always marveled at him. He's always amazed me. I've been intrigued by reading about him and, uh, because of, of his background. And, but he, he was just a short guy, 280-pound, short, fat guy. Amen. And, but he looked up and he said, dear God, You've got every ounce of this 280 pounds of mine. I said, hallelujah, amen. Give every bit of it to him. Give all of it. Some of us will be giving him a lot. Amen right there. Bless God, he was serving fully. Let me say quickly, he served faithfully. Moses was so much like God. You know, God likes for people to be like him. Young people, God likes for you to be like him. You ever want to receive from heaven, start acting, being, trying to be like God. You ought to just try to imitate God. And, then, and everything that God says you, I'm going to be like God. I'm a, what, you know, you used to hear that old saying, what would Jesus do? Well, you all just try to find out about God. Say, what's God want me to done? And, I'm, and one of the things about God is, the Bible tells us in the book of Lamentation 3 and 23, great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. Remember 1 John 1 and 9? He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. He's faithful. And you know what God really likes about people? God really likes faithfulness. You see, how could I get something from God? Try to be like God. Be faithful. Try to be faithful. And Moses was faithful. You see, what do you mean? I mean, the Bible says in Numbers chapter 12, verse 7, my servant Moses is faithful in all mine house. Here is a quality that God looks for in his servant. The Bible says again in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse number 5, and Moses verily was faithful in all of his house. I mean, it's just like God says, can I brag on Moses a little? Or what would you say about about him God well Moses was faithful in all of my house it seemed like God said I want I want to tell you what I want to bless I want to bless somebody that'll be faithful Moses was not perfect are you hearing me now I know sometimes we go to comparing ourselves we think you know if I could be like Moses well you can be like Moses you can be faithful you see, but Moses, yeah, Moses wasn't perfect. Man, Moses had flaws. Man, he had so many problems. You remember when he first got to calling? He said, man, I can't, I mean, I can't do that. You remember it? And by the way, Moses, I'm, I'm going to give you the obituary of a hero because last week when I told you about Moses, Moses got so mad and upset at the people that he struck that rock twice and what he did committed sin. Moses committed sin last week. He committed a sin that was going to get him killed. He couldn't go into the promised land, but he's going to see it. I'll tell you in a minute. I'm saying, what, I'm saying you can be faithful. You don't have to be perfect. You can be faithful to God, and God can bless you in your own way, in your life. 
I tell you, God just looks down and says, here's Moses. While he wasn't perfect, he was faithful. So let me give you another point. You know, there's some people that's just a whole lot more talented than me and you. I'm a pretty low-talented guy. Probably, you know, if I was in the old parable, I'm no more than a two-talented man. I'm not a Billy Graham. I'm not some of these other guys. I, some of these preachers, you, you know, some of these preachers, like one we're going to be having come up and be with us, old Brother Mullins down there, he can preach, he can sing, he can play a guitar. You know, people like that just about makes me sick. You know what I mean? <laughs> Somebody tell him I said that. Amen. <laughs> amen he's blessed amen he's and he does a good job i'm telling you he does amen but but you you know what i I don't have that abilities i don't have those talents i just can't do it well let me tell you all something while you may not be as talented and you may not have the abilities there's one ability that you have that god will bless you all over yourself and that's dependability faithfulness you know why? Maybe I don't have five or six talents, but if I just be faithful to what I got, God will say that's good enough. <laughs> Amen. Be faithful what you've got. Oh, Brother Billy, I've just got one talent. Well, just be faithful, and God will say, well done, thou good and faithful. You see, you don't have to be. Quit comparing yourself to somebody else. Quit looking at others and putting yourself down and saying, I can't be what God wants me. Yes, you can. All you got to say is, I'm going to be faithful with what I am. And, brother, you'll be blessed, and God will, God will reward you and say something highly about you one of these days. You don't have to be loaded down. This week I was reading about a, a young Negro boy. This, old, this, this, this Negro boy in the United States was born in a slave family. And, folks, it's not been that long ago. In fact, this boy was traded for a run-down, broken-down old race horse. They traded this boy for an old race horse away. But he said, you know, I may not have a good background. The color of my skin is going to be a real problem for me. I'm out of a poverty stricken family, and I'm a slave. But he said, I believe there's a God in heaven that can help me. And George Carville Washington, or George Washington Carver, rather, if I remember the name, made a great contribution to this country through the discoveries. Amen. Does anybody know what I'm saying? I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. This old boy, he didn't, he wasn't loaded. He didn't have a lot, but he would stay faithful and stay faithful, and he got promoted. I'm, I'm telling you today that God's looking for somebody that will just do like Moses be faithful. In 1 Corinthians 4 and 2, it is required of stewardship that a man be found faithful. I say, first of all, I want you to see the servant Moses. Secondly, I want you to see the succumbing of Moses. In fact, in, in these verses that we read a moment ago, the Bible tells us, <clears throat> verse 5, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, amen, died. There in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Moses, the servant of the Lord, the circumman of Moses. Moses, he died. Even though Moses was a very godly man and a very useful man for God, yet he was not exempt from dying. My friend, I want us to know that that's true for you and me. All of us that are here this day is born to die. And if Jesus tires his coming, somewhere, somehow, death is going to come into our life. The Word of God says in Hebrews 9 and 27, it's once appointed unto men to die, and after this is coming of judgment. It's an appointment. The succumbing of Moses, he, would, he died. And just as sure as we're here today, if time tarries, we're all going to die. We need to understand it. Moses understood it, uh, but Moses didn't worry about it. In fact, he knew he would be with God, and he was with God, and he would die in the presence of God, and he had no regret and no worry, and when he would die, and he's not afraid, that's the way to die. Die in Jesus. Bless God, you can die with a smile on your face. You can die with grace. You can die with strength, and you'll have no fear, and God will carry you over to a better land. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Notice this. 
I, I, when I look at this, I see, first of all, the condition of Moses. If you notice in verse number 7, the Word of God tells us about Moses' condition. Even though he'd lived a long life, all of these years, Moses is still in pretty good shape. Moses is 120 years old when he died, and his eyes were not dim, nor his natural force abated. Moses was 120 years old, and uh, he didn't need uh, any glasses. Hallelujah. Amen. He could still see good. and that a blessing? Amen. Here he is. He's getting older. Uh, you say, you know, 120 is getting really up there. Well, I really, you know, I'm thinking about it. Uh, you know, somebody, I remember when I was 50, somebody said I was half about mid, mid, mid-life. I figured I'm going to live to be 100 now. Amen. And so uh, I, I, that's going to happen. But, you know, they don't live really a long time today. But in Bible days, uh, they lived a lot longer. In fact, even Aaron lived, I think, 127 years. It was just like kind of routine. Moses really didn't live to fulfill everything in his life. Tell you the truth, he got died early because of what he did. And I ain't got time for that one. But anyway, uh, Moses, as though he's, he's lived 120 years, he still got good vision. He's still in excellent health. In fact, brethren, when he died, right here, his uh, natural force was not abated. He was healthy. In fact, most of us know that God took him up on the mountain, and the day he died, he walked to the top of that mountain, and he didn't need a break and rest. Amen. He was healthy. You say, what are you saying, Brother Billy? I'm telling you one thing. That we who are growing up in years, and you who are younger, quit smoking your cigarettes, give up to tobacco, start living right start doing right and be able to live as long as God wants you to do and be healthy amen Amen. I want to have good lungs you know somebody said preacher you you don't even need a mic you're right bless God I don't cause I'm got leather lungs you know one of those things is these lungs has never had a cigarette smoke down in them amen And this body has never had a beer down in it. Amen. Hallelujah. You say, what what are you saying? I'm saying that I want my body to be in good shape. Amen. I mean, that's the reason that my wife pumps every... er, 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 I go and pick up a whole handful of those uh, vitamins and and, uh, that uh, bee pollen. I take it every day. Uh, You say, what do you take that for? I did a funeral... Uh, not long back of a family from Texas. Uh, and this man, he's, uh, he's up in years, I don't know, somewhere in his late 80s or somewhere around 90. And, and uh, he was telling me how he got to that point. Now, folks, I tell you, I listen to people. Amen. I used to go down and sit with old uh, Lawyer Teague. I'd go visit him and I'd go in there and say it. I'd, <laughs> I, really, I really loved old Teague. I mean, he loved me. He's, he supported his church financially so many times. He'd give us money when we'd go down there. He'd, he'd tell them, uh, Marilyn, go in there and write a check and give this boy a check and get him up, get him going up there. I like what they're doing up there, you know. And, and, and he would tell me, he goes up, walks up that mountain every day, go up there and walk up that mountain. And I, I'd ask him, he'd tell me what body he's taking. I'd go home and say, you know what? It's working for him. Get us one. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Anyway, I was doing that, I was doing that man's funeral. He, was, he said, you know, a preacher, he said, all these years, he says, one of, the, one, of my, one of the things that helped me to stay this way is I take bee pollen every day. He said, I never have to go get my eyes checked. He said, I have no problems that the other men has in a lot of different areas. And he named some of them. I told my wife, I said, get on the bee pollen. <laughs> I come up to the end, bless God. You say, what are you doing? I, you know, and, and, and I exercise. <laughs> Better leave that one off. I'll be lying right up here. Amen. I, I do exercise. <laughs> Hey, hey, no, hey, hey, listen to me now. I'm telling you, you ought to take care of your body. The Word of God says that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And, brother, you ought to make sure the temple is doing well. Besides that, I want to stay here as long as I can and scream at you people really loud. Moses, 120 years, his, he was still strong and his eyes were not dim. And brother, he was able to go and do the work of God. I, I think you ought to take care of your body. Make sure of it, brother, it does good. But quickly, notice not on the condition of Moses, but notice the cemetery for Moses. In verse number 6, the Bible says, 
and he buried uh, him in uh, the valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. I, I like that. Notice something very specially, really something extraordinary here because for most people, when they die, their family's got to bury them. Some's even got to pay the bill. That's, amen. That's just the way it is. But Moses, here, here's a man that it wasn't more people didn't bury Moses. You know who buried Moses? God Almighty buried Moses. God said, I'll take care of him. Amen. I tell you, it wasn't his family. It was God. And God took him to sepulcher. God took him and buried him. God watched over him. Be honest with you, I believe, <laughs> I believe his old body just jumped out and he just jumped in the arms of God and they went on to heaven. I, I believe they just went walking on up that mountain and just kept on going right straight up into the sky. Amen. I mean, the, he, his body might have got in the cemetery, but he didn't get in the cemetery. Now, I don't mean to digress and take out too much time from getting on with my sermon, but I do want to say one thing, and he buried him. He didn't burn him. And I ain't got time for that one. You'd have to come back another time, but you got it, didn't you? Amen. I mean, they've got him in a cemetery somewhere. I mean, godly people is dignified ways, uh, and it's more important than what I'll probably preach on that one, but notice, notice, notice this cemetery. Moses, God buried Moses. He's the only person in the Bible that you'll, you'll read about that God, the God of the universe, took out time, and he buried Moses. Amen. What a glorious day that must have been for Moses. He went into eternity and he spent the rest of his life with the heavenly father you see what makes you think he went to heaven well bless god that when jesus christ was up on the mount of transfiguration you know the two great prophets of god was up there with him one of them was who moses amen he's up there yeah hallelujah i tell you living for god it's got rewards it really does uh and so they didn't know where Mer moses was buried uh, but Moses died. Now Moses died because he smote that rock and uh, God told him not to smite it. And Moses, God said, now Moses, you can't go into that land, but I'm going to let you look at it. And they took him up on the mountain and he looked over in the land and he saw what God had for him and he saw the glories. Uh, but be honest with you, I believe he got a better land than that one. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. When I get to heaven, it's going to be better. Amen. And God buried Moses. Now you... You say, now, Brother Billy, why do you think God buried Moses? Well, in Jude 9, Jude's got one chapter, so Jude verse 9, the Bible says that uh, the devil came to acquire about the body of Moses. You say, why, why, what did the devil have to do with the body of Moses? Well, Moses had been such a great man in Israel. He was such a mighty individual. His name was so great. That Israel, if they could have, and as gullible and as they were to a false ways, they would have took Moses' body and made a shrine out of it, and they'd have started worshiping Moses. And God knew it, and the devil knew it. And so when the dispute was over the body of Moses, the Michael, the archangel, said, The Lord rebuked thee, and they ended that with the body of Moses. Because God said he's to be where he's at and ain't nobody going to be fooling with it. Amen. A devil will take anything he can to make something out of it. And so Moses lived all those years. It wasn't no use making a shrine out of him. He was a man like anybody else. He was a great man. He was a mighty a worker. Now, all of that was good. But brother, he still was a man. God's the God that saved him. God's the God that used him. And God ought to get all the glory. Amen. And now let me say lastly... I want you to see the superiority of Moses in verse number 10. Notice the reading of the Scripture. The Bible says, And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, for the Lord knew him face to face. Now there was no prophet upon the face of the earth like Moses. He is the greatest prophet that ever lived. Now that's an interpretation of what you're reading right there. 
There was no greater prophet in all the earth than Moses. The superiority of Moses is easy to pick up on. Uh, there arose no greater. That's just simply what God said. It was good enough. Now this book ends with a eulogy of Moses' greatness. Uh, what, he, what was he? But yet what did God write on Moses' tombstone? One thing. Uh, I, I, I noticed that, that God writes up on his tombstone exactly uh, what he was. He was a mighty servant. I've noticed that every tombstone uh, represents a passage of time. Anybody ever like going to, going, I know you probably say, I don't like going to graveyards. Well, I go to graveyards quite often. Uh, and when I go to graveyard, if I have any time at all, I try to make visits in the graveyard. I visit a lot of tombs. I just go around. In fact, I, I, I really, really get a kick out of it, to be honest with you. I know you think I'm a little strange. Somebody's going to leave today and say, you know what? Preacher likes walking through graveyards. By the way, that's not after dark. That's usually in the daytime. Somebody give me a witness right there. And I walk on those, I'll, I'll go around and I'll look at those gravestones and I'll see what they place on them. I really like to read what they put on them tombstones because there's usually a message there or something about that loved one. Amen. And, and, and you know, and I've, I've read many of them. Some of them I've got off and wrote down and carried away with me. Uh, you know, you remember that one It says... Uh, as you walk by, as you are now, so once was I, as I am now, you shall be. So make sure you do it right and follow me. Amen. You, yeah, I was on a tombstone. Amen. And, I, and I, I've read others that had things, and I would write them down or try to get them in my mind. But I notice on every tombstone, there's always the birth, and then there's their death. And, and all it tells is a day they were born and a day they died. But then there's that little dash that's between the day they born and the day they died. And that little dash represents their entire life and all that they ever done. Amen. And, and all of us, we have, you know what we really all have is somewhere down through there, we have, a, we have that little dash, don't we? Uh, I don't I, I don't know this lady, but they say she's a local lady or by the name of Linda Ellis. Is that a local girl? She wrote this little poem. It says, I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on her tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted that first came the date of her birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years for the dash represents all the time that she spent alive on earth and now only those who love her know what what that little line is worth for it matters not how much we own the cars the house the cash what matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash if we retreat if we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remember that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's action to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? A little time in your life, birth, death, but that dash is what we spend. And Moses has got a dash in his life is there that little small horizontal dash is what says it all two things i say and i'll be done i want you to see one of the superiority of moses because of his acquaintance with god notice the scripture again in verse number 10 the bible will tell us right there and, and really the whole idea and the whole reason behind it is wrapped up there because there arose no prophet uh in israel since like unto Moses whom the Lord knew face to face you know what made Moses great and by the way what made Moses great what made Billy Graham great what made Charles Spurgeon great what made uh, any of the great preachers you've ever known great and what will make you great is your acquaintance with God how you know God and how you're used of God 
makes all the difference in any church, Sunday school, or ministry. What made the difference in Moses was the way he knew God and how well he was acquainted with God. You see, Moses would become the great deliverer of Israel. He was the one who, after his call, being, and, and you know, he was sort of predetermined to be a deliverer. His daddy, uh, Amram and Jochebed, uh, the mother, knew that he was something special. Amram had had a vision, and God had said, this is going to be the deliverer. And so Moses, yet he had to come to the age of 40. He was acquainted with God at the age of 40. And then at the age of 80, he is called of God to become that deliverer. And Moses got so well acquainted with God. He spent every day with God. He didn't watch junk on TV. He didn't fill his mind with the garbage of the world. He walked with God. He didn't get sin into his life. He walked with God. He spoke with God often. And in that acquaintances and God speaking and God blessing and God using him and him leaning upon God, he become a mighty man of God and greatly blessed and used of God just like you and I can as well because Moses had the power of God upon his life. And folks, it's all because of his acquaintance with God. It's the same thing for you if you want it. You can have it. You can be something special and do something. Just start talking to God more. Start being with God more. Amen. A amen. A in fact, Moses, Moses wasn't like everybody else. I mean, Moses, all the high priest, all the other prophets, they got their word from a high priest. That's, that was the priesthood was in between, and they went in between to work between man and God. Are you knowing what I'm saying? I'm hurrying it up. But, but, and everybody had to go to a priest, and a priest would go to God. But wait a minute, that's not true of Moses. Moses did not go to a priest. Moses didn't get his orders from anybody else. Nobody knew the will of God for his life. He talked to God face to face. Amen. None of the rest of them, not one of them did what Moses did. He was face to face with God. Nobody else has been that way. May I say it in closing, not only his acquaintance with God, but notice his accomplishments for God. I think the second thing cited in this eulogy regarding Moses and his being superior uh, to all and the signs and wonders that he did, which the Lord sent upon the land of Egypt, signs and wonders were performed by Moses. He was a miracle worker. He, he did things that was amazing. And, and let me say again, the key to great accomplishments for God is nothing more than your acquaintance continually with God. I couldn't, I, I know I'm, I'm being redundant maybe, but it's worth being redundant. You, you need to hear that again. Because if you really get serious, there's going to be some accomplishments made. And for whoever's willing to do it, God, like Moses was, the more that you surrender to God, the more that you'll accomplish for God. It's simple. It's plain. And God wants to work through his servants. And he works through those who are yielded and turned over to him. You know what we need to work on? We need to work on getting closer to God that's what we need to work on getting closer to God let's stand with heads bowed while we stand with heads bowed and God speaking as we come to the conclusion of this series of messages on Moses the servant of God God does obituary for a hero Moses the great servant of God was the greatest man the greatest prophet upon the earth he had great accomplishments because he served a great God he had yielded to God and totally surrender he had been faithful to God God had been faithful to him and he honored him and folks God can do the same thing for you if you're willing 
to do what Moses did. God's speaking to you tonight about that.